I keep telling him, he's just got to keep digging. The only guy who passed me from Michigan Bluff on was Eric Dooby, and you were there right back. Yeah. How are we feeling, bro? Gosh, I feeling okay? Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah good. Do yeah, yeah. a little bit more, and then we'll call it. Okay. Here we go. All right, Pete. Yep. Let's give it the last 10 seconds. You. We'll get your bottom. You got Big Panda. You got some Japanesey sketching. Big Panda and Tiny Dragon walking in the distance. Big Panda says to Tiny Dragon, you yeah, know, what's more important, the journey or the destination? And Little Dragon replies, you yeah, it's the company. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Ash always has a very calming effect. Beautiful. You know, whenever you're around him, you know, you're just in a good mood and uh, just, just be in his presence. It's just, you know, it's just a joy. <laughs> I remember the very first time he said to mum that he wasn't coming to church because he felt that he had a greater connection to, to God through his running than he did through sitting in a pew. I mean, kind, honest, real determined. I mean, they come easy. I feel like describing him in regards to my friendship with Lucy is important too, because it's like, he is like a dedicated and passionate human. Like, he's an amazing father. He's an amazing friend. I think the happiest my dad is ever is when he's surrounded by the people that he loves. And that has, I think, expanded because of running. <laughs> 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 Oh, it goes back ages. I mean, I think the mystique of Western States has been around for a long time. Lucy, you know, she got a call in 2017 and she got straight into the race, gifted it through Ultra World Series. And then when you pick up me, say yeah. like Michigan, drop the pack, go to the belt. And because I'll, I can carry crap for you. Yeah. And then you can... I thought the idea of the pack was to put ice in it. But I think it's going to be that hot. Okay. And uh, I think at that point I had two tickets in the lottery. So I've done two qualifying races. And yeah, so she got in. So at least in 2018 I came over, got to see it, crewed with her. And she ran a blinder um, and came third in, I think, 18 hours, 55. And then it's sort of been a commitment and, uh, you know, to search a race to qualify. Patiently waiting on my dreams to come true. When Dad got pulled in December, uh, I remember me and my brothers kind of sent each other a message saying how exciting it was that Dad got in. I opened up my laptop and now I've got this you know, live feed on, um, which is very unlike me. But here I am, I'm sitting at my coffee table and I've got it open. You know, I think we got to about 250. And I knew that obviously there was about 300 odd, you know, sort of spots up for grabs. And I saw his name get called. All right, that was 251. Now we're back to Australia. 64 tickets from Melbourne, Australia's Ash Bartholomew. I knew that he'd probably see my phone ringing or his phone ringing and think, you know, why is Tom calling me? Is everything okay? Because normally I wouldn't call him. You know, this, <laughs> there might be a problem or something. And anyway, I checked the time, 4 o'clock in the morning in Australia. I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Bang, 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 hit it. Waited, waited, waited. Almost like this nervous energy, my heart going. I was like, you know, I just want him to pick up. I've got to tell him, I've got to tell him. Like, we're going to do this. I'm going to be there. I'm going to see him. And he picked up and, you know, I could hear that he'd obviously just rolled over, like, in the middle of the night. He said, Tom, like, is everything OK? And I was like, we're on. I'm like, you're going to Western States, baby. I'm coming with you. I couldn't be more proud. I think as a kid, when you're in the yard and you're discussing my dad's better than your dad, that kind of age-old debate, um, Back then, you know, my crowning achievement was that I could say Dad ran, you know, 15 
Melbourne marathons at that point. Um, and that kind of, I felt like I had won the argument in that seat. Now I'm sitting around the office discussing with friends and I'm going, my 61 year old dad is about to run 100 miles, you know, so yeah, I couldn't be more proud. Do we know that person? Lucy's dad. Lucy's dad. Lucy Bartholomew. Well, at least he'll have a pacer ready to go. And then I sort of, you know, felt, I heard him sort of wake up and he was like, what, what, no, are you sure, are you sure? And then I almost had to like re-double check that I had actually just seen his name get drawn because I thought, imagine if I told him that actually he'd got into Western States and then actually like he hadn't got in, but I just, you know, I don't know, I, I was almost delusional. And he said, oh, I've got to check, I've got to check. And I said, look, look, I'm, I'm going to put down the phone. I need you to check quickly, get, get your laptop out. This is the minute it is in the live stream and you go check and, you know, put the phone down. And I kind of ran around the house a little bit and then got a message from him a little bit later on and he said, yeah, it's confirmed. You know, I've, I've, got, I've been called. And I said, I'll see you in, I'll see you in Western States. And that was it. Here he is. Oh, perfect time. Yeah. Oh, no. energy. <laughs> oh, it's going to be OK. It's just running, you know? Oh, no. It's just left foot, right foot. <laughs> There's just been so much anticipation just leading up to it. Um, and so, yeah, as sort of sick in the gut as I felt, yeah, I wouldn't say I was ready, but it was just I wanted to get it going. And to have the three kids was special. The whole Bartholomew clan, the first time together for 10 years, so it's pretty cool. This is mad, isn't it? This is all sorts of madness. I've never been in anything like it. It's, there's a lot of nervous energy. There's a lot of people here who are supporting, who've got up early to be there with their loved ones. It's hard not to get caught up in that energy, you know, looking up the escarpment everyone's sort of head torches who are wearing them and just to see the path that you're going to be taking. I can feel him, I know him quite well and when he goes quiet, um, yeah, he's feeling this. He's grateful. I think that's what I would say he's feeling. He's feeling like this has been a long time coming. Uh. Runs a lot off not letting us down. Um, although it's like the almost one of the, you know, that's the heart-wrenching thing is that he feels like a lot of it is for us and that he doesn't want to let us down and that we're we're having a hard time out there. This is as good as it gets, huh? <laughs> We just want him to have fun and, and be healthy and, and enjoy. Um, but I can't wait for him to finish that, that final line and hopefully have realised that he's achieved something for himself that he's been working towards for up, up most of 25 years. Okay, so I just push in? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right, right, right. No, no way. Right. Love you, Dad. At the time, I sort of took my place and very much at the back of the the group of runners. Oh, there he is! Yeah, Go yeah. Dad! Go Dad! Woo! Go Dad! Yes, Dad! Woo! Seeing Dad start Western States and hearing that gun go off, I feel like I was feeling mostly relief because I knew that once he stepped over that start line, we couldn't do anything. He knew what to do. He's been training his whole life to put one foot in front of the other. So I wasn't really worried about that. Um, I was just so excited because I knew that he was going to climb up that escarpment, see a sunrise, um, and then head off into the high country. Um, so seeing him run past with a smile, surrounded by 360 something other participants, knowing that he was just going to be out there, and he's not alone, was, uh, was really exciting for me. Hey! Yeah? Not too bad, one, two one stacks. Yeah. Coming off, Grody. Not too bad, yeah. I didn't like that climb. Yeah. I mean, to finish, I think everyone would say that, at the back of the packers, it's really, you know, to get the buckle if I can, under the 30 hours. Um, yeah, I've seen the cutoffs, and it's just, I think I can do, you know, potentially around that sort of 28, 29. Then you hear the stories of the snow and the water and the rivers and stuff. Um, so I don't know, if it might be looking, yeah, like a little bit slower than that. Knowing him so well, I could tell that, you know, the snow and the rockiness and the alpine terrain had been challenging. But I thought that, you know, this kind of race, your attitude trumps your energy out there. So I was just really stoked to see him 
where he wanted to be and doing what he loved um, and in such a beautiful spot. I think I'm gonna take that baton. Yeah, you're killing it. You're right on what you said, 1.30. You were before 1.30. Uh, yeah. Way to go, 61. You're going to Give him a cheat. Here's your throne. Dusty Sample. I will accept it. I will accept it. Our family hasn't been together like this for 10 years, so I think for him to have his two sons, me, you know, I'm kind of always around about these races, but to have especially Tom, who hasn't seen or spectated or witnessed what these races look like, um, was really, really special for him. And I know that, you know, every checkpoint, that was just such a lift. Um, and I think that's why he sat down and didn't want to leave, because he was just like, this is so cool. Yeah, it's been pretty special for Tom to come over from the UK, my son Josh, he flew in on a separate you know, flight from Australia, I flew from Australia, and then we all met San Francisco, and that was our first hookup. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you kind of roll down on a road, yeah. hit onto a single track, yeah. and then it's super nice pine, so soft all the way to the aid station. I mean, hopefully they're as excited as I am, but yeah, I just feel I just, if I don't do it, they've done all this in vain. <laughs> and that would kill me. You got this. Oh, I love it. Love Thanks you, Dad. You too. Dad. We are headed to Michigan Bluff, mile 55, just over halfway. What are you about to do? I am going to jump in to pace for the next uh, 30 miles. So try and push him ahead because we're currently just ahead of 30 hour cutoff finish time. So he needs a little, a little push. Okay. A little kick up the ass. <laughs> Let's be real. There's no pushing. Let's go, <laughs> Michigan Bluff is an aid station that is at about 89 kilometers into this race. So it's a really key moment. It's when you climb out of that second canyon and the big climbs and the hot climbs are done. Uh, for Dad, he got there at quarter past eight, and so the sun was starting to lose its strength, which I know that a lot of the runners needed and appreciated. And after 8 p.m., you can also pick up a pacer. And so I was prepared to run, but if he had been faster, I was also willing to wait until Forest Hill. But he came in 15 minutes after eight, and so I was able to join him. And he said he'd been thinking about it and super excited to have me join him on the climb. I think Lucy can uh, crew from here now because it's past eight. So uh, I might lose the uh, vest. Hey, big fella. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I've got you, I've got you. We've got Lucy waiting for the ride. Yeah. My dad's always been a runner for my whole life. I would ride my bike next to him for his training runs. And then as he got more onto trails and they got a bit more technical, I kind of left the bike at home and realized that the guy just jogged and ate a lot and saw a lot of Australia and I just loved it. Where are we going, Dad? Two bays. What are we running tomorrow? 56. Yeah. How are you feeling about the next section? Uh, yeah. It's a long way. Today is Father's Day in America and I have my dad with me. Dad, what are you doing today to celebrate? Broken Arrow 26 Ks. Do you think he'll love me for that? And then Lucy sort of, when she asked me to come along for the runs, and then it was just great fun. And at the age of 15, I was 50, and uh, we ran at about the same speeds. And we'd just go out on weekends, you know, jump in the car, and, you know, could just drive an hour, find some trails. And it wasn't structured running, it was just, yeah, running for the fun of it. Running was just the activity to what we would spend so much time together. You know, it was, if you actually looked at these weekends, we'd go away. Running was the smallest portion of everything we did. Like, we drive really far distances. You know, we live in Australia. We would camp out for a few nights, and then we'd run a little bit. And I think that's when, you know, 
yeah, we could talk about anything that she, you know, when she first got a period, when she, you know, boyfriends. It was just, on the trail, it's just so easy to have a conversation because you don't have to answer the question straight away. You can sort of run another 100 metres, 200. If you're going up a hill, you can just put the brakes on and get your breath back. And there's no expectation of a, of a quick response. And you just, you just get better and deeper sort of conversations. Running was always just kind of that reason to get out and to get going, and training for a race was kind of a bit of a purpose for it. But it was by no means the whole thing. Yeah, people have come up to me today and said, oh, you know, you're Lucy's dad, which is sort of, you know, my nickname in the running circle. And I love it, you know, and I never get sick of people coming up to me, and it just sort of breaks down barriers. To have, yeah, this sort of Lucy's dad sort of aura, it's, uh, it's been kind of cool. I'm pretty proud of it. Love you guys. Go Bartholomews, yeah? So my plan was to pace from Michigan Bluff all the way through to Greengate. Um, that kind of crosses two major aid stations, Forest Hill and Rocky Chucky River Crossing. Between Michigan Bluff and Forest Hill is about 11 kilometres, just over six and a half miles. And that seems like a really short way, but when you're that deep into a race, it's a really long way. Um, and I think Dad had thought that it would come quicker than it did. Definitely had to compose himself before coming into the checkpoint, seeing everyone. Any trail runner would eat that, they'd sort us in the mouth. After Forest Hill, you run along the road for a bit, and so I had my phone, and was I had a photo of the splits of what he needed to do for a 30-hour finish. And I knew that we were moving well, but probably I wanted to hand him over to the next pacer with a big buffer. And so I kind of thought, I know this section like the back of my hand, and we can put some time in here. I was so excited, yeah, to change over. And it wasn't really like a, a checkpoint because we didn't have any gear. It was just going to be a change of pacer. Pacing Dad was an experience. <laughs> it was... It was good. He was um, he was pretty optimistic for most of it until he wasn't, and then it was really challenging to keep him going. Yeah. Oh, have fun, guys! Thanks, Matt. We're, we're right through here. Again. In my excitement, I was here. Right, let's go. So he's put on the trials. Everything went swimmingly <laughs> the first ten minutes after I received him. How are you feeling? Oh, yeah, early. oh, you know, I actually got a couple hours of winks. Yep. Yeah. So I slept for both of us. <laughs> so we went off with no one in front, and so no head torches or just anything to catch your attention. And unfortunately from there, I don't know, you take a right or left or whatever, but there's a trail that goes all the way down to the river and just off to the left of that, there's a trail and we missed it. We had entered a section where I knew we were running downhill quite a bit. <laughs> and I knew it was a while and a while turned into longer and longer. And Matt was sort of saying as we were going down, I you know, don't remember being this steep or this rutted. I never remembered running this far down, but I, I just thought, well, uh, I guess that's just the way it is. I've been so, it's been so many years since I've been on the trail. And we just went down further and further. As you know, we descended, you looked back, there was no headlights. You looked forward, there was no headlights. And then he said, I think something's wrong. And I just had the most sick, sickening feeling when I got to the bottom and there was this old burnt out frame of this truck and there were no markings and there was a road that went to the right down river and there was one that went to the river. And it, right before that, I told Ash, just stop, something's wrong. Um, he ran down, <clears throat> ran on down a fraction more and said, yeah, there's no flags here. And then we turned around for the hike up and, and so I just couldn't believe it. I was so embarrassed and angry at myself, but I told myself, I've got to keep it together. You know, I've, we've got a mission here. This is just a small hiccup. And again, I, you know, you couldn't help but look at my watch and, you know, time was ticking. We got about two thirds of the way up and two other runners had missed it as well, two couple of guys. And I suddenly, I got this other just crushing feeling that I, we were on the right track, that maybe these were the next runners, and now I forced Ash to hike up this hill 15 minutes, and now we're gonna have to turn around 
and run with them. But my gut feeling told me that no, I was in the wrong the whole time that we were off course. So they turned around with us and then we just typed that last little bit. So all in all, it took an hour and that got stuck in my head and I could not let that go for the rest of the run. So I finished pacing at Greengate um, at about 4 a.m. And I came back to Auburn. And then a few hours later, Jackie woke up, um, who's the wife of Matt, pacing dad. And she had a text on her phone saying, we got lost, we've lost an hour. And that was kind of when we kind of got a feeling that something had gone pretty wrong um, and that it was pretty important that we got to Pointed Rocks and were there for both of them. It was incredibly challenging to see him, yeah, so broken. We have an extra water bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to push the no, I'm good. Thanks, Nate. Thanks. Okay, you got Tom Kate for me? You got, uh, you got the water bottle? The, the water you got bottle? Tom Kate? Yeah, yeah time check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, let me, uh, you get, do you have the other water bottle? Yeah, okay. Okay, you do? Okay, all right. We've got, uh, we are still. We have got 841, and we are still exactly one half an hour. Uh, actually, a little bit more than for than uh, than where we, you know, than, than, than 30 hours. Than 30 hours. So we are six miles to the finish. Six miles. So we got 10 kites. So, yep, and we've got eight. It's 841, so Two hours, 20. We're 9, 10, 11. So we've got 40 minutes, 40 minute case. Yeah. Nah. And we can do that. Uh, you reckon? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think for me, like the emotion, it comes from just knowing how much this meant to him and how differently we saw it. Yeah, and just, it's really hard to see someone you love look in so much pain and there's nothing you can do. About plenty of time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Tell him. See if we can traction on that back. Come on, back. Yep, just lay yep. down. Lay down and traction that back out. You want to give him a little traction on his head, and I'll give him a little. Just kind of... All right, let me. Beautiful. All right. Okay. All right. All right, Ash. Get you up. There we go. Beautiful. We'll get your bottle. There we go. I got that. Fantastic. We're gonna we're gonna try to shuffle a little bit up here. Once we get past this bridge, we're going to try to shuffle and then walk. Shuffle and walk, shuffle and walk. On my head. Yeah, I'd have to be honest, I didn't think I was going to do it at one point. And again, it, my mind just went there. Yeah, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. We can do this. You're going to see your family up here, Ash. <laughs> And then if you want to fall into family's arms, you can, but I'm telling you, we're so damn close now. So, oh, oh yeah, Coke, Coke would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. 
But yeah, I know. I was never going to quit. Come on, Lucy, we gotta get it going. Because we can do this. We can we can do this. Got it, buddy. Yeah. I'd put out on my social media if people wanted to join, because I knew he'd need it. And there was just so many people came. Yeah, 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 it's all right. Good, buddy. Yeah, yeah, we're so close now, Ash. We're so damn close now. Here we go. It was really special. I still don't think I was going to do it, but at the same time, there's no way at that point anyone would have let me stop. The support once you hit that tarmac at the, the two mile, it was special. Um, everyone was there, everyone knew his name. We've got Ash Bartholomew, Lucy Bartholomew's dad, on the drone outside of Roby Point. He is trying his darndest to get here oh in time. Give us, give us all your cheers for Ash in the live stream. Sally's playing him the live stream out there on course. Oh man, it's this fun. is going to be the most emotional finish yeah. ever. He's moving faster. Okay, tell him that people are cheering extra loud for him. Okay, come on. Here's the crowd still smiling. I love it. I think the, the crowd <laughs> in the stadium have just grown, and there's a lot of people waiting for you inside. Everything you've got, Ash. Come, come on. on, Ash. Ash Bartholomew about to enter the track right now. Here we go. He's got the distance. He's on the track. Yeah, Ash, come on. Absolute bedlam. <laughs> Look at the people. Look Ash, the people Ash is completely doubled over, but in a run. I know, maybe there for a while there, I thought I was still in with the shot, yeah, with the crowd. And what about he found out later, is like when I hit the stadium, I think I was only a few feet in that the siren went and I didn't even hear that. And then everyone was crowding around, everyone was like cheering me to run, which I can't kind of get now because, yeah, I'd already timed out. I would have thought just walk it in. <laughs> yeah, it's all over. But I know the hype just kind of built and built and built. I could see people running across. And I don't know, for, I, I suppose in those two or three minutes, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, some crazy way. And then just going down the home straight, I think, you know, 50 metres. Yeah, I heard another loud siren, which I'm not sure what that quite signified. But that's when I looked up at the gantry and saw the time clock and I saw 3.02. And I kind of just took a moment to process that, yeah, I hadn't done it. What they say in 100 mile running is that running 100 miles builds character. We believe actually that running 100 miles reveals true character. And what I ask each of you tomorrow, bring your best self to every moment of the day, and the day will be yours. Okay, just running, you know? Just left foot, right foot. Everything you've got, Ash. Because we can do this, we can. We can do this. His finish means so much to so many people that got to see it. And so to have such a vulnerable moment is so important. I mean, every dad wants their children to be proud of them, but like what he did today was more than that. It was, yeah, beyond proud. Yeah. In all the visions I had of this race and how it would play out, this just never crossed my mind. And I just wasn't prepared for it. Yeah, I'd never pictured myself, yeah, coming in at that position and stuff like that.
Oh, there he is, Dad. How are you? Good. Are you running today? Yeah, I was going to go to the track. Oh, track athlete. Is that just <laughs> is that just to reminisce? When Dad didn't achieve the goal of getting the buckle, the biggest message that kind of I felt like people took away from it and I took away from it was like, it was never about the buckle, you know? The only thing I'm missing now is the buckle, but if I wouldn't have had the rest of the experience, you know, if you had to trade which way you'd go, I think I'd probably go the experience. Regardless of what that day looked like and what Dad's day did look like, it was still a celebration of all things like human can endure and like the human spirit. And what it gave him in terms of getting him out of bed in the morning, getting his shoes on, getting out the door, um, showing up and just being really proud of the process meant that the product and the outcome was irrelevant. When I'm out at most of these like huge races, yeah, I feel I represent her brand. Yeah, not so much the Solomon, but the Lucy Bartholomew brand and that you know happy, positive you know girl. Yeah, not in running life, but in life in general. I think sort of you get through something like this, you get to see what's important. And although the buckle, yeah, meant the world to me prior to going in, I know it's sort of the great experience. I, it's more than the buckle. <laughs>